All right, so this is the first video of basically talking about the tables we need and implementing the tables we need for our Instagram clone. And the first thing we'll start with is users. Users is a pretty obvious place to start. Um, I guess another one might be photos, but users is at the core of everything, if you think about it, because users are connected to you know, photos, they're connected to comments, they're connected to likes. Uh, they're not connected to hashtags, but pretty much everything else relates to users. So what I'm going to do here is something super simple. Like I said in the last video, there's a lot more we could store here. Email, password, like 20 different things, uh, location, city, IP address, all that stuff. We're just going to focus on the basics. So an ID, a username, and a created at. And created at will just be, you know, the day the user joins or the timestamp when the user signs up. It will have a default value of now or current timestamp. Username is just going to be a varchar, varchar, and ID will be a primary key. And we'll be referencing this ID in other places. For example, when we talk about photos, photos will have a foreign key referencing the user ID. So we'll go ahead and the first thing I have is just an empty directory I made just to store this and I'm just going to make a new file and I'll just call it Instagram underscore and clone underscore clone dot SQL. I'll open that up and this is where I'll work. So this is where I'll do a create table users and like we said we're going to have an ID, we'll have a username and a created at. So ID is going to be integer or just int I'll do integer uh, just because I've been doing int, but it's an alias for integer. It's good to see both. And we'll have it auto increment. And it's a primary key. Great. Comma. We'll come back to username in just a second. Create it at. We'll do timestamp with a default of now. And you could also do current timestamp. And remember, you could do date time as well. Timestamp is just smaller. It's easier to store. Okay, so then we've got username. We know it's just going to be a varchar255. There's another constraint that we could add though, which is we want username to be unique. We don't want anyone to be able to sign up with another with the same username essentially. So we can add unique. And you might be wondering, well, then why would we have you know ID be the primary key? Why not make username primary key? You absolutely could do that. But if you're going to have a foreign key somewhere referencing username and you're working with a long string, if someone's username is, you know, something massive like that, because we could do 255 characters, that's going to be slower and more annoying to search. Potential, well, not potentially, definitely slower if you have thousands and thousands of entries compared to a, a smaller integer. So it's good to have a primary key be an integer but we can still have this unique constraint. And we can also add not null. We don't want anyone to be able to sign up without a username. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new database to put this in, but I'm gonna do it in this file. So I'll do a create database, and I'll also just call it Instagram or IG clone. And then I'll use IG clone just like that. So now every time I run this file, it's going to make this database, use Instagram clone, the new database and create the table. And the reason I'm doing that is just one to show you that you can, we haven't really seen using these commands in a file, but also as we go, we may want to you know, rerun this and recreate the user's table or another table. If we realize we messed something up or we need to change something, we're not gonna have any data in there yet. So it's super easy just to create the database again, drop it, then create it and then use it and then create the table users. Okay, so with that said, let's try this. I'm gonna do source, and I need to reference this directory slash Instagram clone dot SQL. Okay, and just to double check, describe users, that looks good. Okay, so if you are good with that, go ahead and move on. Well, next up, we're gonna talk about photos. But I will spend a minute or two just adding one or two users so that we can work with them in this section. Remember, in the next section, we're going to have a massive data set that I'm going to give you. But if we want, we can just play around with some data. So I'll do an insert into users, and we'll just insert username. 
and let's just do two or three. So we'll have blue, the cat, and we could also have, I don't know, Charlie Brown. And then I'll just put myself in there just like that. Okay. So what we could do now, if I just do, if I resource this whole thing, I'll get an error because it tells me I can't create this database Instagram clone. It already exists. So I could either drop the database first and I'm going to do that um, for now. You typically don't want to do that. You know, you don't want to drop a database ever if you can avoid it. But if you're, there's no data in there yet, or if the only data that will be in there is in the same file, like we're doing here, just testing it out, this makes it easy because I can just run this one command. It will erase the database, recreate it, and get all the new tables that I need in there, as well as the new data. So now I can do a select star from users, and there we go. We've got created at in there automatically, IDs automatic, and our three usernames. Okay. Next up, photos.